Um, dear ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear friends, uh, dear Igor, thank you so much for, uh, for inviting me again to St. Petersburg. I really love uh, this country, and uh, Igor is really one of, and Pedro are one of my best friends in the world. That's why it's a great honor to be together with all of them here. Again, it's very difficult always to give this talk after Pedro's speak. Uh, and uh, I have subdivided this in uh, preliminary remarks, and I go to some technical details, and I'm very happy that I can show you our own results that are just published, by the way, by, with the help of Pedro, with a huge support of, uh, as an editor-in-chief in the, in the um, International Journal of Gynecologic Cancers. And you see, I took some items on loan from from Asterix, the 12 tasks of Asterix. I don't know who knows this cartoon. It's a wonderful ca cartoon um, uh, video, and I hope for those, for those who haven't seen this before, I really can recommend it for the children and you too. But let's see. From the early beginning, it was a matter of the debate, what is the best approach for surgery in uh, cervical cancer? You, you see there, uh, Fittichard preferred the vaginal approach, and his pupil Ernst Wertheim, the abdominal approach. Finally, as we just uh, heard, the abdominal approach was a winner of this competition, but at the time of the introduction, uh, vaginal approach was associated with significant lower morbidity because uh, of intensive care unit and uh, infections. Until 2008, before Pedro destroyed all our knowledge, uh, we had the result of a, a huge uh, reviews, retrospective, prospective studies. And all the people who will now come up and tell we ever have knew that minimal invasive surgery is inferior to open surgery didn't tell anything before because the data before showed that all both procedures are equivalent and that total laparoscopic as well as robotic is equivalent to open surgery. We have seen the, the, the schema of the leg trial, and I don't want to go into de details. This was a significant in inferiority, no doubt about this. And again, after the um, uh, publication of this trial and the others won, this uh, statement blow up because it was not again. Please, Pedro, come for the next slide once on the stage, please. Please come here. Pedro, it took me a long time to create this. <laughs> I have to honor you. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Again, I'm a Pedro Morituri Laparoscopisti Te Salutant. Again, now we do have the role of the gladiators. And you see, this is our last weapon we do have is this small troka to survive against a very huge Im emperor. <laughs> so again, please take, take the congratulations. And you see this is a photo just in front of uh, the um, uh, Colosseum in Rome. And I'm, look, I'm looking very scared about the results. But again, let's go into the details. Again, there's a, a part of the movie, look into the details of the technique and the lag trial and try to find out what could be the potential reasons. This is an educational video which is not running at the moment. Can you please make the video running? No, 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 it's, run, it's running. Okay, you see, within the trial all the procedures had been performed as a total laparoscopic. And this is an educational video you can download on, on, on the internet. You saw there's a manipulator in the vagina stretching the tumor, and then over the rim of the manipulator, you incise the vagina and open the tumor. This is another video showing a similar, by, given to me by John Bogus, one of the promoters of robotic surgery. And again, this is very, it's not so fancy, but you see that he had another kind of vaginal manipulator, and it's very nice shown. He moves the manipulator. Once in, once out, once in, second time, third time, in, out. Uh, probably this doesn't affect the tumor if there's no tumor available, uh, but if there's a larger tumor, more than two centimeters, you stretch the tumor maximally to the side. And then, finally, you open up to the abdominal cavity. Is this our best surgical treatment that we do have? 
So again, opened by the robot. And this is one of my fancies. I just got this video from the from the German from a German company. You see, we have do have a biannual meeting in Germany of the German Society of Gynecologists. This was in 2012, live surgery in front of 500 people as a state-of-the-art meeting. This is a demonstration of the sentinel node procedure. When I saw this, I really got pain in my entire body, how you can handle a sentinel node with sharp graspers, without any protection, uh, and without opening the anatomical spaces. And this is the same patient. You see they have uh, separated ureters, and now with the harmonic scalpel, they open all the over the rim of the manipulator, the vagina, but now, and this is again, again the maximum what you should avoid, they took, take a sharp cross bomb. And you see now the, exactly the size of a 1B2 cervical cancer. Is this really our best surgery for cervical cancer? This is a described technique for robotic radical hysterectomy as well as for total laparoscopic. Again, in front of 400 people, state-of-the-art meeting. Going back to, the, to the, our study time, the basic principles of oncologic surgery should be tumor section sound margin, avoidance of tumor cell contamination, and uh, gentle tumor manipulation. Did one of these videos fulfill these criteria? I don't think so. And e even if you go back to the, the original descriptions of Friedrich Schader and Ernst Wilhelm, none of them opened the vagina. Friedrich Schader closed the vagina vaginally with uh, several sutures, and Ernst, Ernst Wertheim designed the clams according to his name to clamp the vagina before he dissected from the vagina in order to also to avoid any tumor spillage. According to this, we started at the University of Jena to adopt uh, the uh, technique of Frederick Schauter together with the lymph node dissection and created the technique of laparoscopic assisted radical vaginal, which was also done more often in France and Canada. You, you see the main problematic step was the identification of the ureter with all the difficulties. And finally, despite uh, very good oncologic results, we had to modify this technique because the urologic complication rate from the bladder and ureter was postoperative too high. That's why we modified this technique to do more the parameter resection or total uh, parameter resection by laparoscopy. But we kept the vaginal closure of the vaginal cuff vaginally in order to avoid any tumor spillage. And today it's a standardized procedure with three steps, laparoscopic staging, vaginal cuff creation, and later on the parameter resection. And this is a uh, short video um, uh, done by us. Um, of this procedure, you see during the laparoscopic staging, uh, we separate the bladder away and the rectum away from the, uh, all the ligaments of the uterus. But again, we haven't cut any uterine artery, so we can stop immediately if we find positive lymph nodes. And this is done under the magnification of a colposcope and uh, in the iodine positive area, depending on the tumor size and with the low lich of the previous histology, you can decide how large and how extensively you have to take the vaginal cuff with these sharp clamps. Then we inject uh, adrenaline solution in order to get a little bit more hemostasis in size vagin uh, vagina in between the clamps. Uh, in and thus, we, we definitely can create an exact vaginal cuff according to the tumor size and the previous histology. And in my opinion, this is much better than the estimation from the abdominal approach, the approach on a, uh, any manipulator. And finally, again, with a continuous future, you see we, we close now the vaginal cuff, and the tumor is now covered by the vagina itself. This is the part of the vagina. You, uh, again, this is only uh, a continuous suture. And after finishing, we re um, 
position the patient again for uh, the laparoscopy. I will skip this if somebody uh, wants to have a uh, longer version, I can send it. This is, a, if you go back to laparoscopy, you see this is exactly the place where we have been for, from the vaginal route with the magnification, both bladder pillars, the vaginal cuff is always closed, and this is the vaginal stump, and we already place the sutures in order to uh, be a little bit faster off the removal of the uterus, and it's up to you now how radical you want to do your parameter resection under laparoscopic magnification as a type 2 or B procedure, and the same is in, 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 in a, a real-time uh, picture. You can also decide type 2 or type B resection according to uh, your preference reference or the tumor side. This is again a movie. The other advantage is exactly you know where you have to end up with the resection and, and you can spare the, the nerves uh, if you want to do a nerve sparing C, C1 procedure. We, uh, we did have several guests uh, with us. A lot of them told us it's a nice technique but you need too much instruments. Uh, you have to two times to reposition the patient and you have, uh, of course, this takes longer operation times in uh, the presence of limited OR capacity and econ economic limitation. It's nice, but we cannot handle this. But now with the upcoming, sorry, with the upcoming trials, some cartoons to illustrate the differences with the techniques, but you can uh, fortunately now uh, look at these cartoons in the um, manuscript, which is now available. What are our results of this technique? And after the publication of PETO, we immediately started to re-analyze uh, our data. And you see in a period of 2004 to 2018, we were able to identify 389 patients uh, uh, with the identical inclusion criteria to the LAC trial. We did not have to convert any patients in the study uh, in, with small tumors and only found, found in one patient in vaginal involvement and this was only in microscopic invo involvement. The number of lymph nodes is adequate to the LAC trial. The huge difference is that we do have uh, in only 3% positive lymph nodes because uh, we strictly abandoned the procedure as soon as we got in the results of the positive lymph nodes in contrast to the 12% in the leg trial. But this is well re probably well reflected with a 10% lower rate of adjuvant chemoradiation in our cohort. And these are the oncologic results of our study. This is a multi-centric study, study, retrospective, multi-centric study of a prospective maintained database. You do, can see we have a follow-up of nearly nine years compared to the four and a half year of the LAC trial. And our survival rates with respect to the disease-free survival and the overall survival would definitely fit the open arm in the uh, leg trial and are not inferior to, uh, as the minimal invasive arm in the leg trial. But again, this is a multicentric study, non-randomized, but with a different technique without opening the tumor. Interestingly, the just mentioned publication by Petro Ramirez the, um, included 704 patients. And there's a small, in the abstract, a small sentence. There was no recurrence in surgery without any manipulator. Maybe this is an, another hint, despite the small number of patients in this group, to avoid this tumor spillage by minimal invasive surgery. And now, this is one of my favorites, task number eight for Asterix. Within this house, this is, he has to find permit A38. But this is a building where he always gets at any office the wrong information and is sent to the wrong place. So say, he runs it with, with, with Obelix through the building and never gets the right information. And the, definitely they have to decide either we give up or we take a trick. And finally, of course, it, they found a trick to overcome the situation. But it's really worth seeing because it, it reflects sometimes our way of thinking and also some administrative work. We, we got some new techniques 
and hopefully this video is running, you see this, when I saw this video as a result of a leg trial, I really also got some pain. I wouldn't staple the vagina with metallic clamps for, for a woman. Even being a man, this is a technique I would not love to do for a young woman with an early cervical cancer. But it's now described in an educational video, but it's not my, my, my favor. And even in the other one, to take only a suture make a knot over the vagina. It's totally unbalanced according to the tumor size. It's a technique, but I wouldn't prefer this. On the other hand, we try to tailor our surgery in the same cohort of patients. We want to shift to sentinel procedure in the, within the Santic study, within the Santical 3 study, to avoid the complete pelvic lymph node dissection. These are the, the exact, uh, the same fears as uh, uh, Petro already um, pointed out. Wasn't this dramatical decrease caused by the introduction of the robotic at the same time and reflects rather the learning curve of all the uh, departments with the use of robot than in, of the, in, uh, the, the minimal invasive surgery uh, itself? There are two existing small randomized trials comparing the radicality of the parameter resections, and both of these Italian trials did not show any difference because some surgeons argued the radicality during the minimal invasive surgery was too less to fulfill the standard. But there are also some doubts. And the, the, uh, the um, top of this is that in the same analysis that showed that minimal invasive surgery, the American uh, Cancer Database, that minimal invasive surgery is inferior for fertility sparing, minimal invasive surgery is better than open surgery. Does it any of these comments make sense for me? Again, I got totally confused as for the permission of 838. Again, all these statements Peter already mentioned with respect to manipulators, CO2, less radicality, ethnic differences, two more sides had already been discussed, but they are also emotional one. Learning curves, the school of surgery where I got trained is laparoscopy only better for obese patients to avoid morbidity, and again, data completeness, whatever. The final solution are different in different countries. You see, the German uh, society has to decide that we have extensively to counsel the patient about the pros and cons. The British society gave up, many of the Americans too, some good friends in the Italian Cancer Hospital in Argentina also given these results. Uh, our hospital has changed to the approach to open radical hysterectomy. So it's a decision up to you. How do you handle your data? Our data could suggest that we have to modify the technique. In my conclusion, the laparoscopic staging at the beginning with a lymph node dissection allows to select the patients for either radical or primary chemoindration in order to avoid combined morbidity. I think this is a still a consensus. The results of electrolyte deserve more extensive counseling, which is time consuming. And according to our data, I think we should not strictly forbid uh, the uh, minimal invasive surgery, but we sh uh, definitely should follow the basic on oncologic roots of surgery, and they were often violated in this trial. And the question is is this possible on the basis of the available data to design a new trial? The good news in the nature after even a heavy thunderstorm, there will always be a rainbow, even sometimes too. This is a picture from my, from my balcony. And again, Eric LeBlanc and I came back from the, uh, um, from the amphitheater in Rome and we survived. We are happy about this and maybe we survive as a minimal invasive group as a gallops in, in France. Thank you so much for invitation again.